Let's look at energy within simple harmonic motion. So here we're going to look at conservation of energy and kinetic and potential energy. And we'll do an example with the pendulum cat. I think I showed you that video earlier, but uh, yeah, we can definitely do that. So the very first thing I think is, is to look at an example. And we've done this before, this sort of spring example. This is the idea of, you know, if we have a spring going back and forth, well, then we have some equations that we can use. Now the key thing, I think, is to first of all look at what the potential energy is of a spring. And the potential energy of a spring is 1 half kx squared, where uh, in this case k is a spring constant. That's important. And your spring constant will actually be, in this case, in joules per meter squared or something like that. But we can also do it in terms of forces, But because uh, you can say it's actually newtons per meter. There's a lot of different units for a spring constant. And x, of course, is your displacement from equilibrium. That's going to be the key thing here. And that's in meters. And of course, you have your energy. And your energy is measured in joules. Now EP means potential energy, whereas EK is going to be kinetic. So kinetic energy is the familiar half mv squared, where m is the mass. So v is going to be the uh, speed or velocity. And that's going to be in meters per second. Of course, m is the mass, just to define everything here, which is in kilograms. So these are the things we're going to need. But before then, I think it's really important to actually look at a spring itself. So let's let's look at this this same boring example here of this spring that's undergoing simple harmonic motion here. So we'll have its this mass right here with these two springs, and we have the walls. Now we have this thing right here, sort of sitting on a surface, and it's free to go left and right. This time we're going to go into this in a little bit more detail, because whenever I'm looking at sort of a complicated looking simple harmonic motion question. Um, what I'll do is I'll just think of it this way and usually this really helps me out. So this one here, it can go, let's say, let's assume it can go all the way to the right, maybe this far, and maybe it can go all the way to the left, maybe like this. I'm just drawing dotted lines. So in other words, it can go left and right, left and right. This right here, this point is what we call the equilibrium. So that means if you leave it long enough, it'll eventually sort of, it starts there. Or you could say that if you sort of let it oscillate long enough in a real life situation, it will finish there. So now let's look at all these different things going on within as it's oscillating back and forth here. So at this point right here, now we call displacement, and we're going to say displacement from equilibrium. That's the key thing here. Okay, The displacement is compared to equilibrium. So we'll say from equilibrium. In other words, how far are you from your equilibrium point? So at this point right here, when you're at your equilibrium point, well, by definition, uh, we can say then that x equals 0, right? because your displacement is 0. Over here, however, your displacement is at a maximum. And over here also, your displacement is at a maximum. Now, this left side and the right side are the same values here. So I'm just going to do the middle and the right, and then we'll just see. We'll just copy it over. So if your position is zero, well, then what happens to your uh, potential energy? If your position is zero or your displacement is zero, then your potential energy is zero. So that's important. So over here, we can maybe put it in blue then. Therefore, EP is zero. And over here then, if you're at a maximum displacement, well then you're at a maximum potential energy. So we can say that's at a max. Of course then this is also the same over here. All right. What about the speed or the velocity? So in this case right here, at this point right here, as it's going back and forth and back and forth, think about it right here as it stops, right over here. Its speed or velocity is going to be zero at this point because it stops and just before it starts up again. So because of that, then we could say because its speed is zero, well, then we can do a lot of other things, right? Then we can talk about its uh, kinetic energy. So over here, then the speed is also zero because this is the same as this. And over here, your speed is at a maximum because this is going as fast as it can as it passes by this point right here, as it zooms along, slows down, stops, comes back. Maximum speed here, slows down, stops, comes back. So basically it goes back and forth and back and forth. 
And because of those situations, then what happens at Vmax? Well, then your kinetic energy is at a maximum if your speed is at a max. So we could say Ek equals a max here. And over here, we could say that Ek equals zero because the speed is zero. And therefore, Ek is also zero here. So I think this is a really, really important situation to look at. In fact, uh, when I'm doing all these other graphs, I pretty much always think about this situation here. This helps me to sort of figure everything else out. I don't memorize things because I always forget which one goes where. So um, I just work this out this way. Just say, okay, over here, where's my X? What's my EP? What's my V? What's my EK? Because we know how these are related. So let's take a look then at a graph. And this graph we can do is going to be of energy versus position. Okay, so in this case right here, that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to actually copy this. I'm going to attempt to do that at least. So this whole thing right here, I'm going to say uh, copy. And I'm going to try to go to a new page here. Go, and I'm going to say paste. And in fact, I'm going to do the same thing on another page as well. I do it again. Paste. There. Now the reason I added these pages was just to make it a little bit easier to look at here. So looking at this, I now want to do a graph of the energy versus position. That's going to be my graph now. It's going to be energy, so energy in joules versus my position, or we could say the displacement here. So displacement in meters. Whereas my next graph that I'm going to do here, this one's going to be a graph of energy versus time. That's going to be the difference. They will give us different graphs here. So let's do this first one here, energy versus position. Well, if I'm at x equals 0, what is my kinetic energy at x equals 0? My kinetic energy is at a maximum. So maybe what I should have done, actually, I should have drawn these in different colors, but oh well. So let me just, uh, actually, if you can bear with me here, I'm just going to do something here. EK equals zero here. I'm going to draw these in green, actually. So I'm going to say EK equals zero, EK equals max, and EK equals zero here. The reason I'm going to do it this way is because now I can sort of color code it. So here at x equals zero, I am at a maximum kinetic energy, so I'm somewhere here. Now at some maximum displacement, whatever this value is over here, my kinetic energy is zero, so maybe it's zero over here. And at that negative displacement, I'm also at zero. So that tells me that my kinetic energy does something like this. That's going to be my energy kinetic here. And then in blue, I'm going to have, well, let's see, at x equals zero, I have my potential energy is zero, so it starts here. And at my maximum displacement, I have a maximum potential energy, so it's up here. And over here at maximum displacement, I also have maximum potential energy. In this case, then I go like this. Oops, I should probably have drawn a little bit nicer here. I should undo that step, there we go. So I'm going to attempt to draw a nice curve here, something like this. And this is my EP, my potential energy. That's what these two look like here. And if I ever want to know my total energy, total energy is just potential energy plus kinetic. That's always the case. So ET is always EP plus EK. That's my total energy. So at this point right here, 0 plus kinetic, that gives me my total energy is actually going to be here. And over here, for example, my total energy is going to be 0 plus this, which is still here. And over here, it's going to be half plus a half, gives me a full. In other words, my total energy goes like this. It's going to be constant. So that's why we can say we have conserved or constant total energy. ET is the total energy. So that's, I think, pretty interesting and important. And furthermore, we can go one step more here and do it like this. Except again, I'm just going to erase these guys over here. I'm just going to rewrite them in green here. So we have EK equals zero, EK equals max, and we have EK equals zero. So this time I want it in terms of time. Now there's going to be a key thing here though. The key thing we have to remember is that assume, because this counts here, this time we're doing it with time as this axis. We have to know when we start the timer. 
So we assume um, that when t equals zero, we are at maximum displacement. So this is important. You have to sort of define that or else you don't know where to sort of start your little thing. So did you start your timer here as it's flying back and forth or did you pull it and then start the timer? So in this case, I'm going to pull it over here at maximum displacement. That's at time t equals zero. Well, if at time t equals zero, I'm at maximum displacement, well, what does that look like? At maximum displacement, which is over here, my kinetic energy is zero. So I can draw kinetic energy then is zero right here. And what happens at some time later on, um, I'm going to be at my displacement equals zero. And when I'm at that displacement equals zero, because it's going to start here and go this way, and then over here, and then go back and forth. So at this displacement equals zero, my kinetic energy is at a maximum. So maybe it's up somewhere here. And then at some point again over here, I'm at a maximum displacement, so my kinetic energy is zero again. So actually, it's going to go like this, something like this sort of graph like this. It's sort of something like this here that sort of oscillates back and forth. That's going to be my EK. Maybe I should wait to label it until I know what's in the way here. And then I'm going to look at my other graph, which is my potential energy. Let's do that. So over here, then, when I start my timer, well, I'm at maximum potential energy, so I start up here. And of course, then at some uh, time later, I am actually at a zero potential energy. That's when I'm at maximum kinetic. So when I'm at max kinetic, I'm at zero potential and so on. So these ones here always go opposites to each other. This one does something like this and so on. I mean, these continue on forever. So this is EP and my green one is EK. Maybe I shouldn't draw it there. Maybe I'll draw it over here. So EK, that's in green here. That's my kinetic energy. And of course, remember that your total energy, ET, total energy is potential plus kinetic. So because of that, then this plus this equals this constant value up here. So I can say then that this right here, this is my E total, and that's conserved or constant. This right here is the same value here. So unless we have losses, which in these cases we're going to consider no losses, no friction or other things like that, we have a constant total energy. So here we have a constant total energy. So we can say that the total energy is conserved. So that's, I think, really important. In fact, we can maybe state that then like this. So total energy that's ET is conserved. In other words, it remains constant in this. This is the important thing. So this right here, total energy, ET, is conserved, which means it remains constant. So this is important, and I think everything really, to me at least when I look at these graphs, everything really starts from just this situation right here. So I figure everything out with the graphs of total and kinetic uh, and potential energy versus position or versus time. I consider them all just starting from this right here, from the situation, knowing about your uh, position, your displacement and your velocity, and then therefore you can figure out your potential energy and your kinetic energy. From there you can figure everything out.